Hi guys, I'm Nick, and today I'm going to show you how to install an APU from AMD. The APU that we'll be using is the Richland APU right over there, the A6-6400K, but the process is the same for Kaviri or Trinity APUs. Now, if you want to know more about the 6400K that we're using, definitely check out my unboxing and overview on my channel, when the link is right here. So, yeah, the first step, anti-static wrist strap. Bite the bullet, spend three bucks, and potentially save yourself from destroying some very expensive computer hardware. Static electricity does destroy computer hardware. It's rare, but it does happen, and really, three dollars of insurance is worth it. So, without further ado, let's install an APU. Step one, there's this little lever on the side of the socket on the motherboard. You'll, if I can get my hand on it, you'll pull up on it. And we'll rotate 90 degrees until it's sticking straight up. The socket is now ready to accept the CPU, or in our case, the APU. So you'll lift it out of the plastic clamshell, being very careful not to damage the gold pins on the bottom of the CPU, and being very careful just not to touch them at all. If you bend them or break them, you've killed your CPU. And now, if I spin the whole box around, that might be a little bit disorienting, but. If you look on the socket, you can see that there's a little arrowhead printed into the CPU socket. That lines up with the arrowhead right here on the APU. So you'll line the two up and you will very carefully, without forcing at all, set the CPU into the socket. Your CPU is now installed. If you're not sure about it, you can give it a little tiny wiggle and down goes the arm. The arm will clip into place and you have now installed your CPU. Here we have our CPU installed and the next thing that we need to look at is a way to take the heat away from the CPU because those chips get very hot. So we need some sort of heat sink and this is the heat sink that came with the APU from AMD. And before we install it, I know that I I took it out of the clamshell, I got everybody excited. Before we install it, it's always a good idea to clean off the IHS, the heat spreader, on top of the CPU. And that really helps with uh, thermal transfer, because they can have gunk on them for the manufacturing process, and any kind of dirt or oil or film on there will really impede thermal transfer and keep your, that was my phone, it'll keep your CPU from being cooled as effectively as it could be. So I like to take a little bit of toilet paper and isopropyl alcohol and clean off the IHS or heat spreader. Now that usually leaves behind some residue so you can take some cotton swabs or in my case a nice microfiber cloth, clean Get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on there and just gently clean off the IHS one last time. Make sure to pick up any residue that may have been left behind from the toilet paper or whatever you used. And the reason that I use a microfiber cloth is that it doesn't leave debris behind. There's no lint that's going to be left on the surface. So I just clean it up really nice, just like that. and. Now we have a nice, shiny, clean CPU. You can watch the rest of the alcohol. There it goes. It's all been evaporated and we are ready to install our heatsink. So, without further ado, of course, ah, microfiber cloths are only good for cleaning, they're not good for plugging your heatsink into the power. But, uh, yes, I digress. This particular heatsink has thermal paste already applied, so we won't have to worry about applying our own. That's not true for all heatsinks. You want to be careful and make sure that there is thermal paste. You need that. Without thermal paste, you're really going to impede the heat transfer, and your CPU could overheat. <coughs> so the method for AMD is very simple. We're going to set the heat sink down on the processor, lining up this little arm with the brackets on the motherboard, and we will fix those little brackets down, 
down, down, down, so it's clipped into the motherboard. And if I could get it to clip, that would be fabulous. I got it to clip. Yay! And then we will take the arm, the locking arm, and slide it into the locked position. It takes a little bit of force to get it down, but now we have a firmly mounted and secure heatsink for our CPU. And then we'll take the wire for the fan, and we'll plug it in to the 4-pin PWM header right here, labeled CPU Fan. And there you have it. Your CPU is ready to go. All right, guys, I've changed back into my green shirt that I had during the intro of this video, and my haircut randomly changed just now over this past second. And you may have noticed that I forgot to film the introduction and conclusion to this video and had to do it after the fact, but yeah. I hope you guys learned a little bit about installing an APU. And if you want to see more videos like this, look at more boxes and watch my hair randomly change my shirts, I probably won't take my shirt off on this channel. I'm sorry. But anyways, you know, if you want to see more technology videos or watch me be weird and screw things up some more, well, subscribe to my videos. Like them. Dislike them if you don't like my shirt, which would really hurt my feelings, but, you know, do what you gotta do.